we, we I, I think, did we hear rumors about this before? We might have heard rumors about it. Um, the email was surprising, but for some reason it seemed like it was the real thing only because, um, actually, okay, now that I'm remembering, sorry. <laughs> the, the email came directly from, from um, Herzog and Demeron's office, actually. So that's why it had a certain legitimacy to it, I think. And so we mm -hmm. were always on board. Mm -hmm. But the second email was from Fred Design. So um, we never heard of the name of Fred Designs, the, the com combination of fake and Herzog and Demeron is like fake Gucci, it's like a big name <laughs> with a fake. Yeah, so. <laughs> It was a little bit, <laughs> but we get uh, um, inquiry from other countries, sometimes from South Africa or Panama. So sometimes it is really serious. So we reply in all of them in case we get something. We're actually still not aware very much of his work, oh, other than the catalogs that were present at some of the meetings over there. Um, it, it's, I think Ai Weiwei's reputation, reputation precedes him in a way, like, like you, you, we've read articles about him, but we haven't kept in touch with his work. Like, uh, he's, he's supposed to be very emotional and all these good things. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the context of his work, I think he's someone that orchestrates well, it seems like, because he took that whole group to Germany and did all those kind of things. So the orchestration, I think, is, is probably amazing. I mean, it is amazing for a project like this. Um, so I think that is the work in and of itself, the kind of orchestration of it. Mm -hmm. it, was, um, it was actually liberating, right? Was, uh, it, it, it was, uh, we always have clients, so it was refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also, it, we didn't have a client, but, and we didn't have a context either, other than just the flat ground that can be remained as flat and no, um, nothing next to it. So that was very interesting. Um, I was thinking maybe it, it, it is like uh, of designing a product almost. Mm. So you have a general sense of the consumer group, but then you don't know exactly how it can be accepted. So um, in that way, we focused on the, the basic thing of the, the living elements. Actually, so Chinese from an uh, industrial design background, so it's interesting to think of it as a product and and uh, in that regard we were trying to not design something that was site specific in that in that kind of uh, the shape wasn't site specific it was more of a kind of conceptual approach mm -hmm. they kept on pushing low tech you know, like uh, very simple construction technologies. And we are, I think we consider ourselves more or less working in that way anyway. So uh, it, was, it, was a, it wasn't a challenge in, in that it wasn't something that we had to change the way that we designed to, to meet these standards. Um, it was something that we started from day one, with mm -hmm. these kind of construction constraints. Mm -hmm. It's fun, actually. Mm -hmm. It was a... I see that as an opportunity because the we in here U.S. it was hard to use a construction and concrete structure for the um, single family house because of the budget. But then in there, like concrete is the most inexpensive and local technique. So that was great too. Right. right. And after our first meeting, it was interesting to um, to talk to. Ai Weiwei's construction manager, and uh, he was has tons of experience. I mean, he was, he was fantastic just talking to him about some mm -hmm. of the constraints. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're excited about working with local materials and techniques. Mm -hmm.
it's sort of like product design. We were it, it doesn't have a client. It doesn't really have a site. It, but it has. We we're so we're trying to go after a strong concept about a large house. The the only thing that we had before us was a program that was way too large for a house. But on the other hand, if you read it correctly. Not correctly. If you if you kind of reread the program, it's it's more than a house. It's kind of, it might be a place of uh, viewing art, even or or some kind of other than house experience, a, a semi public experience. Um, so that that was actually very interesting to us, um, and especially the the description they gave of the client was that it will be a kind of an art uh, artist community uh, art related client. Um, and so we wanted to attack the, the issue in a, in a very conceptual way and not actually, um, it, it would function like a house, but it would, the concept would supersede the, the domesticity of that, I guess. And we um, also um, focused on the probably basic element of, uh, um, I guess, the, the living, the house components. Like so, we stacked all the rooms in one tower. So we made it like eight towers. Um, eight means also very good luck in Chinese culture. And so the um, we stacked all the rooms in the same function. And so we attempt to um, create something that unique house that the that the consumer or the client, future um, client, can you know, voluntarily change their lifestyle even you know, to, to adjust to that uh, space. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I wish there was a little more feedback from, from the client. Um, I don't know if they were having, well, when we talked to phase one, there wasn't much feedback either. So that there was, there was limited feedback after the first phase and, and then there was a little bit of silence from the q and so we're not sure if we did well <laughs> or if we <laughs> met the criteria. Um, I, I, I'm assuming that we didn't have any negative comments, so, so that's okay. But uh, the, it would have been great to have a few more comments, expect, especially about constructability, um, about uh, just very the kind of mechanics of the building. Um, if we could have more conversation with the client about that, that would have been better, I think. Yeah. It's a great opportunity to meet the hundred architects mm -hmm. in five days. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah, those are the funnest parts. The, the the two meetings was the was the funnest part of the project, I think. Um, being pushed into, forced into socializing with other architects. That was probably part of Iowa Way's experiment. I'm sure some strange, a controversial product will come out of this somehow. You know, we were being filmed in photographs, so who knows what's going to happen. But uh, it was very, the involuntary imprisonment was very fun. <laughs> The site plan was, um, was, we thought of the site plan more of like a shelving system and, and for, to display artwork. And so it was trying to optimize, it was trying to create a dense environment, but within that dense, density, sort of stagger the masses so that each one got the maximum of light and views within a very dense system. So the, the system was basically a display system. Mm -hmm. um, so if you shrunk it all down, it'd be a great kind of curated art display in a room or something. But it's at an urban scale. Um, I, I we respected that a lot, I think. Um, and it was it was just a kind of abstract. Once you recognize that it's an abstract showcase for all these houses, then you could actually deal with it on those terms instead of thinking of it as a urban design proposal. It's more of a kind of um, display display system, display yeah. system. most efficient display system. <laughs> <laughs> so. The, the, the you can imagine some client or another developer, you know, just walking down the aisle, and then just oh, I I want you know three of that and four of that and you know five of that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. side or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were thinking about that a little bit. What, what you were, you were just talking about liability. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the 
Well, it was, it's, uh, um, it is interesting to see there are not many um, projects, you know, something like all those. Um, in U.S., and I was thinking the reason might be um, maybe the regulation and code, mm -hmm. um, and also the um, the, the possibility, legal responsibility as an architect, and probably the legal as a legal responsibility um, of uh, architects is most um, I guess heaviest in the world. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly, yes. and the legal responsibility, also the responsibility of the client too. The whole thing becomes much more complicated once you put it in mm -hmm. the U.S. context, and you have to go through these arduous planning reviews with different city ordinances. It would just go on and on. And then I think the good thing, even though the Ordos thing has gotten some amount of press, it hasn't gotten a lot of it. And I think that's helpful too because it's sort of in isolation right now until it's finished. In the U.S., I think if something like this happened would be very press heavy, it would, it would already have that, that kind of uh, pressure on it and you couldn't incubate as a kind of um, strange experiment. We are doing something similar to it though in Portland. There's a 14 parcel invited mini version of Ordos in Portland, Oregon that's happening. Um, and so there's these little smaller versions. I think first and foremost it kind of elevated the level of design, like, you know, there's a lot of expectation and um, and just talking to peers, everyone was beating their head against the wall to, 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 because there's no context, because you're just designing something for a shelving system, an urban scale shelving system. It's really um, a lot of pressure on ourselves as a designer, a lot of self-criticism. Like we went through many iterations and hated most of them, um, and then talking to our peers, folks went through this similar process, like a lot of self-criticism in a way. Um, but that self-criticism comes from being in a group of 100 amazing architects, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. um. Also, it has a very unique, um, no, no, unique, it's, it's um, I should say, yeah. It, it has very um, typical tendency that uh, what's happening right now around the world, because the if you see the um, the big development is happening in like the um, countryside in China or um, or the um, Middle Eastern country, or, you know, those country there's no context, but people are building these huge cities. So designing, like, up, up, it, um, no, not too far ago, um, this, you know, design, the designing something that ignores the context is very, I don't know, almost like, a, um, is considered as a sin or something. Um, yeah, but then, the people change and then the market changes so that, you know, this is very typical condition that um, architects is expected to design something without context or without even, you know, visiting the site. Mm -hmm. so. It's a good exercise for all of us young architects, the hundred, because we'll have to do it on a larger scale somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Public, we, we are um, interested in doing work that, that interfaces with the public somehow. So a public library is always what I say. We, one of these days we're going to design a, a new library that deals with the changing technology of the library and also is an amazing public space. So, mm -hmm. But it could be any public space. It could mm -hmm. be, a, can be park or plazas or... Those kind of things. <laughs>